Let's take a look at creating some parts and features in Creo Parametric. To make a new part, you can click on the new icon in the ribbon or the quick access toolbar. And you can also see that there is a keyboard shortcut of Control N. When we click on new, it defaults to creating a part. And here are some other different kinds of objects we can create, including sketches, assemblies, manufacturing models, and drawings. And you'll note over on the right-hand side, we have some different subtypes. There is solid, sheet metal, bulk, and harness. Harness is grayed out because a harness can only be created in cabling mode inside of a cabling assembly. Let's take a look at creating a bulk item first. And for the file name, you can get, call it whatever you want. And I'm going to make this adhesive. And there's the option to use a default template. A default template could have various different parameters in it. And a bulk item has no geometry, just has some different parameters in it. You might create some parameters for the name of the supplier, or you could create another one for the quantity. And I'm going to call it QTY and use the drop down list to change this to a string and maybe I want the quantity to be a slash r oops let's make sure that is capitalized a slash r for as required and then click OK and that's all there is to creating a bulk item again you'll notice that's not even open on the computer screen because it is just something that's going to go into an assembly Let's go back to the new icon and I'm going to create a part again and let's change the subtype to sheet metal and I'll just call it sheet metal for lack of a better name. Uh, so a lot of times the file name is going to be a part number actually and the common name is where you could use real words to describe it. When I click OK we enter into sheet metal mode and here you can see the icons that are on the ribbon. But most of the features that I want to show you are going to be standard features. So let's create a new part and we'll leave it as the default solid subtype. And I'm going to leave the default file name and click OK. So now we have our model started. I'm going to turn on the display of some of my different datum. So you can see that we have some datum planes and a datum coordinate system that came in from our default template and datums are located up here in the ribbon of the model tab in part mode. So let's create some different features. Now I'm going to start off by creating a sketch. I'm going to locate it on this datum plane and there are other videos that go through these different clicks in more detail. I just want to show you what these different features look like and for simplicity I'm going to sketch a rectangle and let's change the dimensions, make this a value of about six and change this other dimension to about four and then to get out of sketch mode I can right mouse click and use the check mark and so now I have a sketch created in the model and you can see it in the model tree for clarity let me turn off my datums for a moment and I can select the sketch and from the mini toolbar I have commands to create base features like extrudes and here you can see in the shapes group we have some of our base features like extrude, revolve, sweep, swept blend and from the overflow menu you can see that you can also get to commands like blend and rotational blend but I'm going to create an extrude and this is being generated as a solid it's going to add mass to my model so that is good. I'm going to leave the default height of 5 that was suggested and then hit the check mark. So, so far we've created two different kinds of features. A sketch, which is a datum, and an extrude, which is a base feature. Now let's create some of our engineering features. And we'll create a hole and a round. So to create a hole, I'll locate it on a surface and I'm going to grab these drag handles to what I want to dimension it to and I can right click over the depth and change it to through all and let's make this diameter big enough for you to see and then change some of these different dimensions and that is good and so then when I'm happy with the feature I can hit the check mark so 
Again, engineering features are ones in which Curo Parametric already knows the general shape and then you're going to pick some references to locate them in the model. With a round, we can pick various edges and I'm holding down the control key to put them all in what's called the same set so that they'll be controlled by the same dimension value. And there we have those fillets applied to the surfaces. For the next kind of feature that we'll create, I'm going to make a, another datum plane. And let's choose datum plane. Again, it's a type of datum feature. And we can pick some surface and then locate it a distance off of this surface. If you want to, you can go to the Properties tab and change the name, or you can change the names of features in the model tree. Let me turn on my datum plane display and I can hide some of these other datums that I no longer need in order to reduce my screen clutter. For the next kind of feature that we're going to create, I'll create a surface feature called a fill feature. Again, it's out of the surfaces group. And I'm going to locate it on this datum plane that I just created. Let's click on the sketch view button so we can look right at the plane. And for this one, let's use an ellipse and drag it out and for the sake of this demo I'm not going to change the different dimensions let's hit the check mark and the check mark from the dashboard of the fill command and so there we have a flat surface created in the model and the next kind of feature that I can create is an analysis feature from a measurement maybe I want to know hey how far is this surface from the bottom of the part. So if I go to the analysis tab, I can go to the measure command and I'm going to choose distance and I'm going to pick this surface and hold down the control key to select a second surface. Right now it is reporting the distance between those surfaces are a value of six. And if I go to this button, I can make this as a feature and I'll leave the default name and click OK and then oh uh, let me go to the feature tab I just want to make sure that I am generating a parameter for that distance value and here's where you could create some different datums resulting from that feature as well but I'm not going to create the datums let's click the close button and here you can see now I have the analysis feature created in the part all right for the next feature I am going to create another sketch to show you another surface and let's click the sketch button I'm gonna sketch on this surface over here and go into sketch mode let me change to my sketch view and for this one I am going to use a spline so I can make a nice shaped curve over here and again I'm not gonna change the dimensions let's right click and hit the check mark to get out of sketch mode and with that curve, that sketch still selected, I can extrude it. And I want to show you this because here I'm using a base feature. And for this base feature, I'm generating it as a non-solid feature. So again, the base features are often used to create solid geometry, but you can use them to create non-solid geometry as well, such as a surface. And now that I have this surface in the part, I can show you one of my editing commands. And with the editing features, you'll notice that just about all of them are grayed out except for the project command because with most of these commands, they work under what's called object action. You select something and then you perform an action. For example, I can pick this surface. You'll notice that a number of the commands in the editing group are now available. I'm going to create an offset surface. And from the dashboard, I can use the one that's called the replace option and pick that surface that I just created. And now my original extrude uses that surface as the shape of the bottom of the part. All right, for the next one, let's take a look at a... Uh, drawing a blank for a second. Let's take a look at a user defined feature. And for the user defined feature, I'm going to take some of these other different things and hide them. 
and for the user defined feature again that is a collection of entities that are stored in a part file and so I'll go to user defined and I've got a folder with a bunch of user defined features I'll select the first one and then for locating it in the model let's locate it on this surface and we can define some offset references and if I want I could rotate it for its placement and I'm not going to change the different dimensions and hit the check mark so with this user defined feature it actually creates what's called a local group and if I expand it I can see all the different features that were brought in from the user defined feature and the last kind of feature to show you in here is a data sharing feature and I'm going to create what's called a published geometry feature and oops actually let's go to the model intent tab here's the published geometry command and with published geometry this allows me to create a feature that consists of a bunch of different surfaces in the part that someone might want to reference later on so for example I could select this surface and actually I'm gonna hold down the shift key and select another surface I'm using a method called seed and boundary for selecting surfaces and then deselect some of them and what this allows someone else to do is if they needed to make references to this part they would have these various different surfaces uh, that they would need and just pick one more and besides that they can also select some different edge chains and some other different references like this datum plane that I created and now I will hit the check mark and there we have our published geometry feature. So again, just to show you some of the different classes of features that we have in here, we have datum features like the datum planes right top and front and the coordinate system and this sketch. Let me make them visible. Uh, besides that, we also have a base feature, which is the extrude. Then we have a couple of engineering features, the hole in the round, then we have another datum feature and here we have a surface feature then an analysis feature another datum feature a sketch and an extrude which again is a base feature but this one was generated as a non-solid feature then we have an offset feature that is an editing feature a user defined feature and a data sharing feature Lastly, if I go to the common tab, I just want to show you that I have some commands that are obsoleted and not in the interface by default. You'll notice that they don't even have their own unique icons. Uh, so these are a, another class of features commonly referred to as construction and tweak features. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.